this video, we're going to be tackling the leak code question reverse string. And this is one of those questions like FizzBuzz that people are very arrogant about. People, everybody thinks that this is an easy question, but I guarantee you it's the other way around. Most people, most working software developers could not solve this question. And there's a, there's a reason for that. There's actually a very good reason for that. And that reason is that you have to modify the array in place. And that takes a wrench and that throws a wrench into everything. But what exactly does in place even mean? It means a lot of things, but there's a trick. The trick to understanding in place is that you cannot create a new array. Most of the time you're going to see this in a question that requires an array and you cannot create a new data structure. You cannot create a new array. It also means that you can't use things like link or Java streams because link and Java streams are built upon the concept of returning a brand new data structure. So in order to understand this question, first things first, Let's just take a look at what they give us and what we are trying to create. What leak code is going to give us is what's called a character array. It looks like a string, but this is actually an array of characters. You may not know what characters are, so let me explain them very quickly. Whenever you create, let's say, a string, we have a string here with the word string in it. What's actually going on underneath the compiler in languages such as C Sharp and Java is that it's converting it into an array of these things called characters. And notice characters aren't double quotes, they're single quotes. And that indicates that it is a single char versus the double quotes in a string. And that's what leak code's going to give us. And we need to reverse it. We need to reverse the order. Simple enough, but how exactly is this going to work? We're going to use what's called the two-pointer approach. And this is the most common pattern in leak code. You see the two-pointer approach everywhere, especially in arrays and strings like we are doing now. Here's how it's going to work. First things first. In every leak code problem that you have, you're going to have some state. You're going to need to keep track of everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and declare my state. And since we're using two pointers, I'm going to go ahead and declare my two pointers left and right. The left is going to go, you guessed it, at the left side of the character array. And the right is going to go at the length minus one. Length minus one, if you ever see length minus one, it pretty, just, it pretty much just means the end of the array. Then what we're gonna do, since we went ahead, we've declared our pointers, what we're going to do is we're going to declare a while loop and we're going to have these two pointers iterate towards the center. Some of you may be confused about how do the pointers actually move towards the center? That's a very good question. Whenever we want to move towards the center, all that we're going to do is we're going to increment our left and we are going to decrement our right. And as we increment and decrement, that's going to be what shifts the pointer towards the center. And as we are shifting our pointers towards the center, we're going to switch the elements in the array. So we're going to switch the H and the O. So we'll go ahead place the O right here and we'll place the H right here. Then we're going to increment. We're going to decrement. Then we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to switch the L and the E just like that. And lastly, just like we did before, we're going to increment the left and decrement the right. The pointers are now the same. So when our while loop tries to rerun, it's going to break the logic. Our algorithm is going to end and that's it. So let's go ahead, let's hop into IntelliJ and let's code it. So we are inside of IntelliJ and first thing that I'm going to do is create a brand new Java class and I'm going to call this solution. Within the solution, we're going to house our method. 
So we're going to be operating in place. Therefore, we're not going to be returning a new array or initializing any array in this function. So we're also going to take in the function. What we're going to be modifying is what we are given. Basically this char array, S. So first things first, we're going to go ahead, declare our state. AI is doing a bunch of these stuff for us, so we can pretty much tab through a lot of this, but I'm still going to explain it. We need those two pointers. So we initialize the left pointer as zero at the front of the array and the right pointer at the very end, the length minus one. This is a very common pattern. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to declare a while loop. This is very common in two pointer type scenarios. And the reason that we set the left minus the right is so that when the indexes either reach themselves or cross over each other, which they should never do, but just in case, you want that while loop to go ahead and break. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to store a temporary variable. Now, many of you are going to freak out and start saying, well, you didn't tell me about any temporary variable. What is this? So notice something very peculiar here. When we want to switch the O and the H, let's just say we're at our first iteration. We want to switch the O and the H. Let's just go ahead and swap the O with the H. But where does the H go? The H disappears. But the thing is, is that we have to swap the H with the right element. And if it's disappeared, how exactly are we going to do that? Well, we're going to store it in a temp. This temp is going to store the H so that we can still access it when we need to put it in the right pointer. So it doesn't just disappear when we do the actual switching. So we'll store the left so that we can actually input the new left element into the right when we need to switch. Then what we're going to do, this is the actual switch. And once we get done switching the left with the right, then what we're going to do is we're going to switch the right with the temp. Then we're going to have to do our increment. So we're going to increment our left, and then we are also going to decrement our right. Remember, don't increment the right. If you are going to be moving the right pointer, you're going to need to decrement because the right pointer needs to move towards the center. It needs to decrement, not increment. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead, let's copy all this right here. And we're going to take all of this code and we're going to get out of full screen mode here. I'm going to toss this into leak code. We're going to see what we get. So I'm going to take this right here, going to go ahead, put that into the text editor. Let's go ahead, run. We are accepted. All of our test cases have been accepted. Let's go ahead and hit the submit button, make sure our time and space complexity is good. So time complexity, congratulation is in. We are winners and our space complexity we did everything in place, so we are constant. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.